Ben. I think that's what it all comes down to. But I wanna- let, let, let me ask. I want to get you and Papa Don's. Uh, we can start with Papa Don here. Uh, uh, just condensed version of what you thought, because there's this is one of the wildest things we've all ever witnessed of the media scrum with Punk yeah. and Tony. DGP uh, on the product. You know what he's talking about? <laughs> yeah, I know. What he's, I, he, from, time to ta- from time to time, I watch. I mean, I don't watch as much anymore. No, because did you see I, the media scrum, though? No, I did. I saw what he said about yeah. Cole Cabana and about I pop when he says the EVPs couldn't manage a target. I thought that was hilarious. Um, but I did see that little clip. Um, to, to be honest with you, a work or shoot, it's got people talking. And that's all that matters. That's what they need right now. And regardless of what's going on, I'm not there, so I can't really comment as far as who's right and who's wrong. But it's got everybody on there on, on you know at the edge of their seats talking about what's going on, which will lead hopefully to more viewerships and and bigger and better business for everybody. Um, I didn't see the pay per view. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. But uh, from what I heard, it was a good pay per view. And I just I don't know, man. The way I look at it, it's when you do after the after the show interviews like that like with like new japan style we don't see the owner of new japan sitting between the wrestlers talking to the to the talking to the people we talk to the wrestlers so i I mean i don't know i I like i think it was better i think it would be better if tony khan just stayed in the back and just did his own thing because he's doing something that's working because people are talking so that's where i'm at with the whole scenario what do you think ben i think ggp is politicking for another dark Salvation match. That's what I think. Listen, if they were lucky, I they would sign my ass because I don't smack my leg. To was he on elevation? Who did you wrestle? No, I was on dark a year ago. I wrestled the Who dark did you order. wrestle? Who? The dark order. Who dark in the dark order? order? Yeah, uh, was it Uno and uh what's his name? Stu? Who? <laughs> Player Uno and those. Player Uno oh and my Stu. God. <laughs> oh my god. Uno and those. Um yeah, what man. Do you think, ben? Uh, uh, I think they got trouble, big time trouble in their locker room. And if people want to put it over as a work and I'm getting work. How can it be a work? One guy got I bit, the other guy got hit in the head with a chair. Yeah. That, that's I, not a I, work. I, I didn't hear this part. I'm not saying that, that at all. Yeah. So the, the, yeah, yeah. Dude, no, no, no. But I'm just saying to the people that say it's a work, oh, bit. Yeah. Okay, well, I, like I, let's work this and then let's get into a real fight. I'm going to bite you and I'm going to punch you in the eye and I'm going to hit you with Throw a chair. table in the head. Right. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Like that didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? And now and but we're it. so used to being worked. Yeah. No, no, but I just think Ben, what happens is we're so used to being worked, right? And right. they haven't been yeah. as transparent as they said they would that you immediately think this could be a work. But I'm thinking, how the f could it be a work? People actually got hurt. Right. And we've been what saying was, what was your, let me hear your take. Because I, I got I to. Well, you know what? Take. Real quick, real quick. Let me just say something real quick. This also ties into what Disco says two seconds ago about religion, where people don't want to admit that they've been lied to and they're wrong. So when people see something like this and they're claiming it's a work, it's because they still want to believe that AEW is, is going to be the, that company that they can root for. And it's an like, angle. This is brilliant. Right? Yeah, it's, exactly. It's right. They, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we, I mean, it, it, that's with everything in life, you know, religion, everything, politics, people are afraid to admit they were wrong or they got duped or they've been, ba- you know, bamboozled by they the government or whatever. They don't want to bring up that. Don't want to talk exactly. About. They just, <laughs> exactly. ah, whatever, whatever. whatever. So what do you think, Ben? Uh, I think Phil's going to fill and uh, I've worked with Punk and Cabana and, and OVW and I've seen them treat me fine and I've seen them treat other people like total trash. Uh, I don't Cabana know. too? Yeah, man. Uh, really? Yeah, I dude. know nothing, bro. I have. I've been with literally. I've, I've never like. I. I've never nary. I have. I've engaged with Colt. I'm very. I like the guy. <laughs> I said, you know, stuff. It's always been a pleasant experience. I've never heard a bad thing about but how the they guy. treat you. Doesn't mean that they treat everybody like that. But I've I, never heard any negative stuff about Colt Cabana. I I'm hear a big fan either. of Twinkie the Kid, though. Go ahead. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm a big fan of Colt too, man. I think there's a lot of money written on him, and there should be a sit down with Jr. this week on Wednesday. Otherwise, they're not doing the business they should be doing. Um, but and I've I worked with the Bucks and two CW many times, booking them as well. Yeah, when they're, they're no problem, bro. I can't no see problem. them being a problem at all. They're but as the cool story, as they come. They busted into Punk's locker room hot, which I could see. Well, they w- wouldn't be hot if somebody dissed you like that. I'm sure you'd go in there and check them. Yeah, except I'd win. <laughs> That's the <laughs> difference between me and them. Uh, you know, and and A Steel 
is a Harley race guy. So him biting somebody, it, it kind of popped me. You know what I mean? Not yeah. that I want this type of, but like, if you're going to not mess with somebody, I would not mess with Haku or Harley race or anybody they train to be honest. Right. With you. So it's very plausible with these egos and, you know, the, the, like you said, the buck's easy to work with, but were they ready for an EVP spot? No, they worked con. They didn't, they didn't put on shows. They didn't have to go poster towns, do all the things that it takes to actually be a book or write storylines for an entire show and put yourself on the sidelines when they really needed to be the feature. So that's really, uh, you know, created a, a situation for Punk to do what he does best, jump over everybody, be in Tony's ear. That's going to create X amount of problems. Hangman Page, I don't know how a teacher cannot value education and you've got the godfathers of wrestling around you and you're not going, let me be humble and please watch my match, William Regal, Dean Malenko, right. uh, Jake Rock. Like that, that to me blows my mind. Yeah, I'm not going to – I don't take advice, guy. Right? I, like, come on, I can't like, believe that. How could you say that and think anybody's going to like – support that like you that coming out of your mouth you're gonna have even like the modern fans yeah are gonna look at you like are you well are you kidding me like you know so like you know just yeah so yeah and you got the sex appeal and the spot but you're doing all this woke stuff like coming out in a prius with horns on it or coming out with rainbow fringe on your pants or butterfly pants while yellowstone is the number one show on tv and brock is doing that and you could be that version but instead we want to do some woke joke ha ha look at me so stuff. what you're saying is you're not a fan of the butterfly pants uh, I, I bought a pair. They just don't fit me right. They just don't. You need that, that was the SRF. most ridiculous thing I ever saw. I was like, what the f*** are you wearing, dude? Yeah, dude. You're like supposed they, to be they, a cowboy, like a badass cowboy. You look some Kmart guy, you know, just bought a f- and it's. Well, I heard him and Billy can tag. They're going to be uh, howdy doody down at the glory hole. So you guys can go check them out. With I, I had a theory that just our, our discussion of this drop today, we did, we did a K100 talks of this, but, uh, my theory, my theory was that the whole premise of this was that you know in the past few weeks, you know, Punk cut the the promo on Adam Page, you know, Alvarez and Dave Meltzer went on their thing and say you know he wasn't supposed to say that he wasn't busy for himself, you know, some of the dirt she started reporting that you know uh, Cole Cabana isn't around and insinuating the Punk let you know was the reason for that and uh, told Tony I don't want him around so he's not on TV anymore he's out of the Dark Order and something. And I think that so this is the first time since these stories came out, and Punk walked into that room and like, okay, here's all the dirt cheek guys, and I'm gonna get my receipt now. Here, all you're all here, and you saw the way he started. Everybody, raise your hand if you consider yourself a journalist, and you knew right off the bat, like, okay, because all you guys have been writing about me, let me tell you my side of the story here. And bro, he had he had to bury Cole Cabana. Because his side of the story is like, you know, you guys want to say I I got rid of Colt Cabana. Okay, this is Colt Cabana, you know, but I had nothing to do with that. I think he was trying, trying to say, is like, look, you guys try to say thing. It's not my decision. And he's sitting right next to Tony Khan. The fascinating thing to me about this was how Punk just alpha mailed the poor guy. And like Tony's never been involved in a scrum mm-hmm. where he's at any type of controversy or anything they've all been like massage therapy sessions where we're asking stupid how questions just, like how was how did how was you know when melzer's how's how the rehab on your ankle go uh had you know, this it's been like that for, for, for two years okay and all of a sudden he's just like what do i do here and i because he's looking at the guy go like and i know he's thinking his mind should i just cut this off because i've he, got no experience he said he, no comment on that he, he wanted he, to save that question Right, zero experience, you know. So Punk basically comes out there and says, you know, you know, here's Cole Cabana. You, you guys probably didn't know this, but here's my relationship with this thing. And then because people are saying you, you went into business for yourself against Adam Page. All right, here's how. This is why I went into business for you know why I'm burying Adam Page because he's a dumb. Yeah, and like this is all the I reasons like, why like he's a dumb. Fuck. And, like, you know, and like hit it pretty hard, you know. But, but bro, I don't. Deserved. Punk doesn't do this. Unless he's got all the dirty people there in front of him, like you know, like okay, you're, there's my you're, there's my audience, you know. No, so, that, I that's got not you. true, bro. Because I was I was at the Tony Atlas incident. I was sitting right there the whole time, bro. What, was so, that? What, 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 what do you mean the Tony Atlas incident? What's that? The OVW Tony Atlas story. Do you know that story? It's pretty oh, like no. So. no so Tony Atlas is sent to OVW to do reports, scouting reports for the office, right? And Do, like oh, the, the wrestler Tony Atlas, the muscle guy Tony Atlas. Yeah, yeah okay. foot Tony Atlas. Uh, okay. So uh, 
Punk is there doing a favor for Danny because he's already been called up to ECW and uh, is down there and is going to be in the six man with Cody and, you know, everybody who's over and team over uh, that is his buddies, right? John Morris and I think a bunch of others. Um, and Tony Atlas, uh, had, we were at the go home meeting sitting there and he's like, you know, uh, everybody around here was pretty cool. I wrote down uh, everybody was real respectful, da, 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 except for one person. <laughs> And he looks at punk and then he goes back. He goes, everybody worked really hard. And he goes, and, and I put over, he goes, except for one guy, uh, was a complete. <laughs> and he's looking right at punk. He goes, you're obviously talking about me. He goes, yeah, you're right. I'm talking about me. So instead of staying small and shutting the fuck up and you shut the fuck up and just take it, he starts going back and forth with Tony Atlas on it. And Atlas goes, I told you about that wrist tape. Cause Tony Atlas sees him with his hands all taped up, which was his thing with the X but these old timers don't know what the new little pop thing is that he's going. And instead of punk staying small right there, he goes, well, maybe you don't know about my show and referencing ECW, the relaunch and everybody in the, in the locker room just goes, Oh, bro, just stop. And they start, they keep going back and forth. He goes, I don't care about your show. He goes, Vince McMahon sent me here to do a report and you were the disrespectful out of everybody here. And he pretty much punk stands up with Cody and others, and they walk out on Tony Atlas in front of everybody, bro, mm -hmm. after going back and forth that. I mean, there's some more exchange in there. Tony Atlas is like, I don't got to be here. I could be up in Maine. I got bears eating my cabbages, getting in my garbage can. What year is this? What year 2006. is this? 2006. 2006, 2006. Isn't that fascinating? Because Punk in the, in the promos, basically, dude, he's talking about the same stuff, the veterans – and the, the, the younger guys not listening to me and everything that Dude, one had that happened 16 years ago with him and Tony Atlas. There's something in the Chicago water where these guys, and I lived in Chicago for six years doing improv, Nick Hausman. I was on wrestle zone with him. We were all in the same improv stages. We brought Colt Cabana into improv. So that was popping me huge out of the gate. Like mm. him, like punk selling for the Chicago improv community, which makes no money. Mm. And that's where he <laughs> is with Nick. I'm just like, are you <laughs> kidding me, bro? And, and that shows me, how small and petty punk is as a man they're missing some part the chop wood carry water go out in the field and pick rocks mentality that's been ingrained in me oh. is this pettiness that goes into these comic book store guys that live this fantasy of wrestling but really don't have the man card to do it yeah you wanted to get into oh, ufc and, bro, do that. and punk that punk work? to think about this you're perfect that's a great point because I talk about there's a lot of wrestlers that are in this comic book community, fantasy world, and like you know stuff to the point that like I we said this like years ago, bro. Punk thinking he could get in the UFC and actually win a fight was the most delusional action of a, of a, of a human being I've seen in a very long time. He was super but, like you thought that like you actually thought that like being a wrestling champion like you know, and you did judo for a couple times and took some classes and stuff and like you thought you could go in the UFC and fight and win. I'm like, well, well, you know, go ahead. Hold on, pop it up. hold on. First of all, speaking from experience, I am a comic book Star Wars nerd guy <laughs> in professional wrestling that is a real man and can smack anybody around who talks <laughs> to me in my face because I'm not but one. You don't act people. like him, bro. You don't you act, act like him. No, I get it. I get it. But as far as Punk goes into UFC, whether he was delusional or not, I have to commend him only because he followed his dream and he failed. Right, he didn't get where he wanted to he get. Got on himself, you got to put that over, yeah. But you got to put over that. Hey, man, I want to do A, B, and C, and he did A, B, and C, and he failed miserably at it. But he did it. Ninety nine percent of these people on this world today don't follow their dreams. They're too scared to too scared to fail. So, if, with that being said, alone, I commend him. Whatever, whatever the. No, I, I, I agree with you, and I commended him when he did it too. But just like I commend Brock Lesnar, he tried to get on the Minnesota yeah, Vikings. Absolutely. He followed yeah. his dream, bro. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, there is something, there is a lot to what Ben says. You've got all these comic book guys that seem to have all these vegan beefs, you know, and that <laughs> perpetuated back in the indie days, and they're bringing them to the forefront, and they're not doing business. And let me give you my take real quick on the, on the punk thing. I was all for him because he finally took the dirt sheets to task because they don't investigate <laughs> They don't and call they you. Them for it. They're like, you yeah. were nice to me <laughs> after yeah. you dragged them. It was they've beautiful. never, right. They've never gone to journalism school. Never. They think they're infallible. They think they know what the f is going on. They've never been in a booking meeting. They've, they don't know what the f 
is going on. They want to act like they do. They're wannabes, try to be's, and never gonna be's. So they go out there and spew all this hate and and punk destroyed them. So I love that. Me okay. Too. Um, obviously, Hangman Page went out there and he went into business for himself. If he wouldn't have gone out there and buried punk without telling him, this would have happened. So punk said, Oh, you went on national TV and you buried me. Guess what? I'm about to do it to you. Okay. So I can understand where punk is coming from. What I don't understand, and this is where Tony needs to take over. Because I've had this problem. There are certain issues I have with wrestlers personally who I dislike immensely. But I cannot preclude that from entertaining the fans because they want to see that wrestler. They don't give a f that me and this guy don't get along. So for business, I will use them. Are we going to be going out and singing karaoke anytime soon? No. Are we going to be eating dinner together anytime soon? No. But the fans want to see them. So I think that if... Hangman went into business for himself. Punk went into business for himself. Uh, and nobody told Tony. They just f***ed him over. Tony has to now say, okay, this is my business. You went into business for yourself. Now we need to work together. <laughs> the the way thing. Punk is he talking is... Is he a strong enough leader to do that? Because I'm, this is, bro, I'm, pay, I'm paying you guys. Five, I'm paying you five million dollars. You're going to do. He needs to put, put the, the thing down. You, you guys are going to do business respect. now because you guys yeah. did your own business. Now you're going to do my business because I'm the one paying you. And what is this? Okay, oh, hang on. I'm I'm gonna, let me let me say this real quick. I'm, I'm going to tell you something, Ben. Wait, Joe, Joe has something to add here. Just because it's it's uh, it came from uh, the recent Wrestling Observer Radio because I know Conan has been saying these guys should turn this into an angle and work together. Brian Alvarez says he would be extremely surprised if both sides who fought backstage at AEW ever worked together again. He'd be surprised if all of them are even together in the company again at the same time. That's But that's messed up because that shows that Tony is not the booker he should be because Conan, I'm sure, would back me on this. You got a problem and you got a problem and think you can uh, uh, undercut my creative? You're working together. And if either of you this up you're both out of here i don't care exactly what i would do i'll put your shirts well, on well, sale for a dollar so you make no <laughs> money he's right. done it before he's had to do this before this is not this is not bro this is new to tony khan this is yeah, not but, new to the red the to vince no. mcmahon eric bischoff cody the guy this did this, this happens guys have extreme dislike for each other on the extreme end of the bell curve a lot of people like each other some don't some some just can't get along Right. Look but what they're doing. They're, Shawn they're, Michaels they're, and Bret Hart went out there and worked. You know, exactly. after getting a fight, after, after getting any the fist most fight. Money. The, and That's so they're just, like, I doubt they'd never work together again. There should be a J.R. Colt Cabana sit down on Wednesday. Uh, and, and let me put this click to you. So Hangman goes out there. Does that seem in character for him to go into biz for himself? Or is it more likely that the Bucks, Omega, and them are spinning that to, to channel that through Hangman to undercut Punk while he tries to politic, get in Tony's ear to put him over a certain place, and then knows he doesn't respect Tony because he's in second grade compared to 12th graders on this. It's just going to take time. <laughs> And then, and then he can go into business for himself. Now nobody respects Tony's vision. He's got no hands on anybody, and everybody's doing what they want to try and cut each other's throats. When that's what should be on TV, but instead we're getting Will Osprey and two Australians who aren't even booked in the main event. Instead of playing out your biggest storylines, bro. Yeah, right. So like, these guys are just take their. It, it's very. WCW, take of the here come the sharks, same as in TNA. Take the big bite out of the wallet, and I don't have to listen to what anybody says, bro. I got my money already, and they don't have any fear of reprisal instilled in them, mm. and that's the biggest issue right now, dude. Yeah. From what I hear, and this is what I heard today, that's they were th people were threatening to walk away, right? Yeah, so, right, right. and if that's the case, then someone needs to me needs to be the sacrificial lamb. And if they threaten to walk away, fire his ass. I mean, in this in this I day wouldn't age, fire anybody, bro. I'd keep you under contract and yeah. freeze your ass. I'm not going to let <laughs> yeah. you go that easy. Well, right. Whatever the case may be, all I'm saying is that a lot of, and not only just in wrestling, but in life today, everybody's a keyboard tough guy. Everyone got freaking all, all these, uh, pe all this, all this, all the big words are being said, but. Until someone gets punched in the throat, they don't realize what reality really is about. I come, I come from the school of old, man. I mean, you talk trash, you're gonna get smacked. That's it. You 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 don't like it. I wouldn't talk behind your back. 
I'll talk to your face. And I'm not trying to play a tough guy here, but you know what? That's that's the, that's the generation we came up in the '80s and the '90s. You know what I mean? Shit happened, shit got real, shit got real. And if you, and you and unfortunately, this business now. I've been in it for 23 years, wrestling all over the world. Right? 23 years I've been wrestling, and I've seen it deteriorate. Where it used to be a locker room full of men. Now it's a locker room full of boys and some men who are acting more immature than the boys that are younger than them in the locker room. And that's a big problem. And then on top of that, you got all these independent wannabe promoters, like Conan said, are nobodies and never was and never going to be, who think that because they throw a, um, a, a show flyer on, on social media, they're going to draw and actually bring people into the house and they draw 25, 50 people. That's it's ridiculous. It's out, utter nonsense. This is the only business that I've been in where you can fail upwards and being an idiot rewards you as opposed to doing the right thing and keeping your mouth shut and your ears open. I don't you know. Can, you lose thirty percent of your audience from the start and your booker of the year, like because the sheets gas you up because they're on your payroll. They're exposed. All of them are fanboys. They're not real journalists. They're not, you know, the they're not real EVPs. I like those guys. I like the bucks. Uh, so easy to work with, like you said, but they weren't training and having the book and putting on shows to get to that point. That was just buddy favors. And I remember the parking lot speech. This is going to be different from WWE. Meanwhile, the last uh, big meeting they had, our doors always open classic triple H and Steph, the same meeting they had two weeks before. So they became cool. exactly what they didn't want to because they let politics buddy favors and all that take over the locker room and well, put poison in there bro and this is going forward i think we all agree that you know they, they pride themselves on bragging about the ratings when they get a good number or number you know they, they tweet out like every time they do well that they, they want to you know when they don't do well as an excuse because something else are bro the wwe just came out came off another in succession of a great pay-per-view experience They've been killing the pay-per-views. Every time those there's those live, it's like after the shows, like that was an unbelievable spectacle. What a great show and everything. And 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 one day everybody stopped talking about that. And now all of a sudden, all everybody's talking about is AEW. And you have an opportunity now. It's like, okay, that momentum the WWE has, you could put a stop to that and have people start talking about you if you capitalize off of what just happened and turn it into business on Wednesday night. I just don't think they don't have I, – I, I don't care what anybody says. I don't have any confidence that they can because they already turned the MJF thing into a wrestling angle and stuff instead of a shoot. You know, so they already, like, did that thing. He's, you know, he's in the Casino Battle Royal, and, like, that, and that was the whole thing. You know, when you had a good shoot angle to work with, now you have another good shoot angle to work with. Bro, don't make the same mistake twice. Try to capitalize oh. on this if you they want numbers. They won't you know? show. They can't show us and show that they that they were infallible. The the same old phony wrestling creative of put a mask on this guy in a giant poker chip, or you grab the brass ring. We'll, I'll put a curse on you. We'll keep going as opposed to going. Here is real heat, and there's a huge incident, and cover it in TMZ style and all that stuff, and, and to make it salacious where everybody's talking about it even the WWE locker room, but do they have the wherewithal to, sh to be that vulnerable? I don't think the wrestling bubble and ego is even close to being able to turn a dollar off of that, man. They, they, they won't sit down and do the right, what needs to be done. 